If you are the parents of one or more children ages 2 to 4, you have probably witnessed this scene more than once. Your child starts screaming, yelling, crying, whining, throwing itself onto the floor, or even starts hitting you. You are left wondering, what just happened? How did my generally happy child become this little monster? In this video, we aim to help you deal with this behaviour with real tips scientists approve of. But let's quickly look at two questions first. What is this monstrous behaviour and why? Why does it occur? The monster moments are called temper tantrums. They are a normal part of your child's development and occur around the age of one and a half and stop around the age of five. There are many reasons why they occur. Your child might be tired, hungry, ill, frustrated, seeking your attention, trying to get what it wants, trying to avoid doing something it doesn't want to do, or unable to use words to say what's up because its language is still developing. How do we know all this? Different scientists from all over the world have interviewed parents and audio taped their children to study temper tantrums. If you want to know more about the function of temper tantrums, check out the video of our colleagues in the description box below. So, now that you know what temper tantrums are and that they are normal, the question remains, how can I deal with them in a helpful way? Researchers suggest you remember the suitable acronym CALM, C-A-L-M as each letter tells you what you can do to prevent a temper tantrum. The letter C stands for communication. As a parent, you are teaching your children how to communicate as they are observing you and your partner talk and interact. Provide examples of feeling words such as angry, sad or tired. Also, ask the child about their feelings. You could offer your child pictures of feelings, for example. This allows toddlers to select the picture that best describes their feelings. Remember, the sooner your child can communicate with words, the bigger the chance to avoid a situation turning into a tantrum. Until it can use words, support your child to express its needs as best possible. The letter A stands for attention. Your toddler needs your attention and will find all kinds of ways to get it, so give your child positive attention, like reading, playing games, and including the child in routine activities such as cooking and cleaning. Try making a positive comment every now and then when your child is playing by itself. This may prevent the child from trying to get your attention through behaviour you don't want. Child proving the home is a good idea or offering age-appropriate toys that distract the child from things you don't want them to touch. The letter L stands for letting the child express itself. You can do this by using the feeling pictures we talked about before. Offer choices and avoid saying no if possible. But of course, if your child wants to cross the road at a red light or some other dangerous thing, you must say no. Try to explain to your kid why it shouldn't do a certain thing. Now to the last letter of the word calm, the M. Make routines of nap times and meals as much as possible. This addresses their basic need and offers security in what happens at what time. Maybe have a chart with clocks and pictures so your child knows what to expect and remind them beforehand what's up next. That's it! Now you have the toolbox of calm. Communicate well, be attentive, let your child express itself and make routines of their needs. But when a tantrum occurs, and they will occur, our research has revealed that there are ways to deal with the temper tantrums as they are happening. It might help you to think of getting rid, R-I-D-D, -D, of the tantrum. Let's see what this means. R stands for remaining calm. If you stay calm, it will help your child to calm down as well. If your child is a tantrum, remember, you are the one who is in control. If you are not in a calm state at the onset of a tantrum, breathe in and out, and then use a neutral tone to state firmly that certain behaviour is not okay. Ignore the tantrum as much as possible, because every attention you put towards the child in this situation is basically telling your child that this is the appropriate behaviour to get what it wants. You want to teach it that this is not the method to get what it wants. There might be situations in which you need to interact, for example if it hits someone or endangers itself, but mostly trying to ignore the temper tantrum and interact with your child as little as possible is the best way to go. Now to the letter D. Distract the child. A possibility is a change of activity, room or scenery. For example, leaving the store might also be a good idea. And now to the second D and the last letter of this video. 
Differentiate between need and demand. Do say yes when meeting the child's physical and safety needs, but don't give in to demands. Giving in to demands may reinforce behaviours you don't want. How do I know if it's a need or a want? A need must be met. Your child must eat. But a want can be met if it is a reasonable request and asked for in an appropriate way. That's it. In the case of a full-blown monster moment, to get rid of it, you need to remain calm, ignore the temper tantrum, distract the child, and differentiate between a want and a need. Now your toolbox is complete with real science-based tips to help you to prevent the temper tantrum with calm and deal with them by remembering red. And don't worry if you don't always manage to apply them. Nobody is perfect and even super parents have their moments of hot-headed frustration when calm and red are too far to grasp. If after watching our video you are still unsure about your child's behaviour, we would like to help you with any remaining worries. We know from the present state of research, if your toddler is experiencing temper tantrums, it does not mean that it will be more aggressive later in life. Yes, they are uncomfortable situations for parents, but they do not imply that anything is wrong with your child. However, if a temper tantrum still happens regularly after the age of five, or your child hurts itself during their tantrum, or you simply want reassurance, then we suggest you turn to your pediatrician for further support and advice. In this video, we brought you some tools that scientists approve of to help you prevent and deal with temper tantrums. We hope that this toolbox will enable you to understand your child and help your little monster learn to deal with its needs and feelings in a healthy way.